Hey, hey, Rick. I'm recording this, so nobody run around in your skivvies or anything with your camera on. Uh, Darn it. <laughs> I know you were totally planning on that. Well, it doesn't look like it's going to let me let Trey in, so hopefully you can hop on tomorrow. Everybody is going to get a replay, by the way. Um, everybody who is here and who signed up will get a replay just in case you missed something, or if you do have to hop off, really not that big a deal. Um, I will get you guys the replay as soon as possible. But we're going to go ahead and get going, and I may uh, forgive me if I have to admit people as we're kind of walking through here. I know a couple of people are going to be a little bit late. So first of all, everybody see my screen? Yep. Good. Good. Okay. Awesome. Perfect. Well, welcome. I know you are all here because you want to learn if online training is right for you, if it's even a viable um, source of income. Uh, after speaking with a lot of you who were attending tonight, um, you're, you're just unsure if this is actually a thing, like, can I actually do this? So I kind of revamped how I was going to um, bring this talk to you guys tonight based on what um, I've heard and the feedback I received. So it's going to be a little bit different than I was planning, but I think it's going to be more geared towards who's attending and hopefully that will resonate with you better when you hear my story. So that's kind of what I'm going to tell you guys tonight. I'm just going to be super candid with you. I'm going to tell you what I did uh, what I did wrong, what I did right, and hopefully how I can help you be a little bit more efficient if this is something that you choose to pursue. So um, who we are, who are we, who, who, who we are, if not measured by the impact we have on others. So I don't know who Carl is, but I really, really like this quote because um, obviously if you are looking at getting in the coaching industry, you care about people, you want to impact others in a positive way. Um, if you don't, you can get off this call now because that's not who I'm about and that's not what I'm about teaching my clients. Um, we are here to make a difference in the lives of people and we are here to serve others. And uh First and foremost, I always tell my coaches, you know, you have to come from a place of love and come from a place of caring. And if you can do that out the gate, you're going to resonate with people and you're going to be able to serve people to a much greater capacity and, um, you know, have a greater impact because that's what it's all about. Um, I always tell my girls, if I could just affect one person, if I could change one person's life, if I could save one person's life it makes everything that I've done the past 10 years worth it. So um, I know you guys want to impact others. I know you want to help people. And that's what I want to help you do. So who am I? A little bit about me. I am a fitness and now business coach. I do have a full roster of fitness clients online, obviously. Um, I scaled my business to 100K before I even thought about business coaching. Um, I had several people approaching me saying, hey, how do you do this? I really want to get started. I don't know if it's right for me. And so I thought, you know what? I want to help people help more people. So why not give this business coaching thing a, a shot and uh, help spread my story and share with others how not easy this is, but how simple it can be. And I think it can be completely life-changing for somebody who is super passionate about fitness. You know, you have a message to share, you know, you want to help people um, and making sure that we are, um, you know, making that as efficient as possible and also not burning ourselves out. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit more here in just a minute, but um, I am a hybrid coach. I do online coaching. I love, love, love women's boot camps. I love women's small group, large group, any type of women's strength training, I am there for it. I thrive off of that environment. So um, I will never be just a strictly online coach because I love my people. I love being in person and uh, it's something that keeps me going. So I am a hybrid coach. Um, I love powerlifting, strength training, and teaching women just to how to be more confident underneath the barbell. A couple of fun facts about me. I have two dogs and a cat. Um, I love my pets. Uh, obviously, I am a power lifter. I just got done uh, with nationals prep in June. Uh, that was a complete experience, but that's another talk in and all of, of itself. Uh, I love everything outdoors. Me and my husband love to go camping uh, out to the lake, all that fun stuff. And uh, I'm also a sports fanatic, love the K-State Wildcats. That comes from my husband. I actually grew up a KU fan and uh, he uh, kind of transferred me over. So um, that's a little bit about me, but I'm also going to tell you guys and what I wasn't planning on doing was telling you my story and where I started. So I'm going to try and give you the abridged version because I don't want you guys to be here all night, but I actually did not go to school to be a personal trainer. I did not uh, have any 
uh, inkling of doing that when I was in college. I was actually a business major. I majored in marketing and I minored in management. And I started working for an oil and gas company right out of college, uh, did their accounts receivable, accounts payable for about three years. And during that three years, I was actually going through a transformation myself. So I was losing weight. I was learning how to strength train. I fell in love with the weight room and everything fitness. And I was just reading uh, everything I get my hands on. I was learning as I went and eventually decided I wanted to get into bodybuilding and um, the rest is history after that. So I started training clients online. I started training clients at my local YMCA before my nine to five and after my nine to five. And then about three years in, I said, you know what, I'm going to go all in on this fitness thing. I quit my very stable, amazing nine to five job to work at a boxing gym for about 10 bucks an hour. It was part time. Um, my husband was actually my fiance at the time. And he was like, well, we got to make ends meet. So <laughs> do what you can. And that's what I did. And that eventually led to an opportunity to train as a full-time personal trainer at a local gym. I knew one of the trainers I was actually leading, she was moving out of state and I took on a good deal of her clients. Um, so I had just one opportunity after the other. Um, my, in my time at Optimal, I actually uh, built an all women's boot camp from the ground up, basically from about 20 participants all the way up to 75 participants. I had a full roster of clients. I was working 12 to 16 hours a day. Um, I loved what I did. And for about two years, I felt like, man, I am living the dream. I'm making lots of money. I'm helping lots of people. Look at all these women. It was such a great feeling. And that's when the decline started to happen. I obviously didn't have any time for my family. I didn't have any time for my own health and my mental well-being. Um, and eventually that start to, started to wear me down. Um, I ended up with... Um, struggling with depression and anxiety from 2018 to about 2020 when the pandemic hit, obviously. Um, and, and I thought, you know what, I just, I have to get out of this. I have to, I have to take a chance on myself and, and just remove myself from this environment and see if that helps. And I was really questioning my purpose at that time. I thought, man, I don't know if I can continue to be a coach. Um, it just takes so much from me that I don't feel like I can give anymore. And, um, the problem at that time was, I was building somebody else's dream and not my own. I was living somebody else's purpose or what they thought my purpose was. And I wasn't stepping into who I really was and what I really needed as a coach to help fill my own cup. So uh, long story short, uh, six months, I had a non-compete, so I couldn't do anything fitness related. I had a couple of online clients that stuck around. Um, and then in November, I went all in on myself. I started uh, working out of a couple of different gyms, just paying rent. Um, you know, I did all of my own marketing, uh, finding all of my clients, trying to bring my old clients back together. And I built everything from the ground up. Um, in February, I hired my own business coach and started really pushing the online space because I just saw the big pivot that was happening because of the pandemic. And um, I knew I needed to get that on track. So I hired my business coach. We doubled my income in less than four months. And shortly after that, I was on the road to six figures. So it is doable. You do not have to have a huge amount of education in exercise science. You do not have to have a business degree. You do not have to have lots of money to get started. I had zero money when I got started. So uh, I'm going to show you guys kind of what I did uh, wrong and also what I did right and how hopefully you can be more efficient in scaling your online businesses as well. So here's how I did it in three easy steps, just three steps. I'm gonna try and keep everything really simple for you guys. I'm all about tangible. I'm all about practical and giving you guys some really um, down to earth things that you can take from this presentation and start implementing right now to see results. So the first thing I did was niche down. You have got to niche down. You have got to target your ideal client and figure out who exactly that person is, okay? Um, a lot of times I feel like new coaches are like, I'm just going to take anybody and everybody I can get. I just need to, you know, I just need money at this point. And while that seems like a good idea at the time, you're really just shooting yourself in the foot because guys, you cannot help everybody and you shouldn't try. Okay. Trying to help everybody just leads to frustration for you, for your clients. Uh, they're not going to get results. You're not going to feel fulfilled. Um, so try to help the people that you can help. So, uh, like if I were a, a if I were to start going after people who had hormone issues, like I have no business being in that space, right? Because I'm not a hormone expert, so I can't help somebody with big hormone issues. So that's not my ideal client. That's not who I need to be targeting. 
Um, this also helps you avoid imposter syndrome because again, I'm not trying to help people that I can't help. I know exactly who I can help and those are the people that I'm going after. So I know I can get them results uh, because I've been there. We're gonna talk about that here in just a little bit. Um, and so you're staying within your lane and you're not trying to veer out into these other places where you have no business. Like I wouldn't go and try to train somebody for an NFL combine. Like that's not my lane. I'm not gonna stay in my lane. I work with women who are Christ focused, who want to learn strength and want to build mental fortitude to pursue their God-given purpose. And that's what I do. That is my target client. That is my ideal client. And I, I target those people specifically with my messaging. Um, and in this way, I can find my dream clients. I can work with people who are, you know, Christian women who want to learn how to strength train, who have that, that uh, drive to be better mentally and physically. So um, your presence on social media should both attract and repel people. So if somebody comes to my page, they should immediately know whether I'm for them or not, just by reading my bio. Like if somebody comes to my page and says, oh, uh, you know, I'm an atheist and uh, I, I love cardio. So uh, this girl probably isn't my thing and they go somewhere else. That's totally fine. That's what I want. I want more of the people that I'm trying to attract and less of the people that I'm not trying to attract so that I make sure I'm staying in my lane and that I'm resonating with the people that I really, truly want to serve. Um, and also be aware that this might change over time. Uh, you'll get to know people that you really love to work with. Uh, maybe your uh, you know, health shifts in some reason. Maybe you have a big surgery. Maybe you have hormone issues yourself and you learn all of this stuff. And then you're like, man, I really need to share this with people. And so then that becomes your target audience and your ideal client. So this could shift over time. But the important thing is when you do learn that is to just be consistent and make sure you're speaking directly to those people and that when they come to your page, they're like, oh, that's me. Her messaging is exactly for me. I want them to read a post and go, yep, yep, and just check those boxes off. So how do we do that? How do we niche down? Three steps here. Identify, empathize, educate, and empower. Okay, so we're going to dive into each one of these in a little bit more detail. And this is where it gets super, uh, this is the tangible takeaway, guys. So if you take away anything from this presentation, I want it to be this. I want you to be able to find and speak to your ideal client. And in order to do that, we have to identify our ideal client. So step one, identify exactly who you're speaking to. And this is likely you five to 10 years ago, because what are we really good at? things that we've already done, things that we've already accomplished. And to beat that imposter syndrome and to make sure that we're staying in our lane, we have to be totally confident with speaking our truth and speaking to what we know. So even though you don't have to be an expert, right? We don't have to know everything about health and fitness, but we can say, hey, this is what works for me. Let's try this and you know, push people along in the right direction. So if you are an ex-athlete and you are trying to attract people who used to be athletes in high school and now maybe they've fallen off track and you did that yourself, you're like, hey, I was once an athlete. Um, I know what it's like to get older. Um, your metabolism isn't what it used to be. And you are uh, really struggling to get to the gym because you don't have any structure. Like that's speaking directly to your ideal client. That's speaking directly of yourself five to 10 years ago, right? So get very, very specific with this. I want age. I want male or female. What do they do in their spare time? Uh, what are their spending habits? Where do they hang out? What do they like to do? What are their tendencies? What do they not like to do? What are some adjectives that describe those people? What do they spend their excess money on? Really get specific with this so that you can get inside their heads. And this isn't a big deal. This isn't something that's like, you know, a brainiac meet can do, right? We're talking about you five to 10 years ago. So rewind the tape, put yourself in your shoes five to 10 years ago and think, who was I? What was important to me then? What are my pain points? And that's next, right? Empathize, step two, pain points. What are my pain points? What did I wish I would have had back then to make my transformation a little bit easier? What were my excuses? What were my roadblocks over and over and over again? What always tripped me up? What do I wish I would have known? What resources or tools do I wish I would have had, right? And you're writing all these things down. And guys, this is, this is an exercise where you can just like word vomit 
And that's what you should do when you're trying to find your ideal client is just write anything and everything that you can think of that involves who you were five to 10 years ago, what you wish you would have known and how you can solve those problems, okay? So step three then would be to educate and empower people on those roadblocks, how to overcome them, uh, creating tools and resources and protocols that will help those people that were in your situation five to 10 years ago. And you know exactly how to do that because you've been there, done that, right? So we're not stepping outside our lane. We don't need to have imposter syndrome because we're just helping people who used to be in our shoes, right? And we can speak to that because we've already been there, done that. Keep giving, give, give, give. Give as much information as possible. I, I hear this from a lot of coaches like, oh, I don't want to give away my secrets. I don't want to tell somebody too much like, because then they don't need to hire me. Guys, people don't pay for information. They pay for accountability and support, okay? Because they can Google all this crap. Like it's all out there. There is nothing new under the sun. You cannot reinvent the wheel. Everything in this industry is already out there. Yes, we're learning things about the human body and there's you know some little things here and there that we can tweak or whatever. But in the grand scheme of things, we all know calories in, calories out. People need to be strength training. People need to move well. We need to focus on good, clean nutrition. We know all of this, okay? The big rocks are always going to be the same. So don't be scared about giving too much information. You can never give too much information. You can never solve too many problems because the more problems you solve for somebody, the more indebted they feel to you. And eventually when they are ready to hire a coach, you're going to be the first person that they come to. Um, my general rule of thumb, and I know a lot of people when they start talking about coaching and being uh, you know, a, a presence online is you get a lot of messages They're like, hey, how many calories should I be eating? And at that point, I'm like, if I can answer your question in less than 60 seconds, I don't need, you don't need to pay me, right? If it's going to take five to 10 minutes or a 30 minute conversation, you need to be paying me for that. You need to compensate me for that. So kind of go at it that way and make sure that you are not, uh, you know, they're not paying you for your time. They're paying you for your expertise, right? And we're going to talk about payment and uh, how you set your pricing here in just a little bit. Next step outsource and automate. And guys, this is a big one that I did not do from the beginning, okay? Systems and processes. You need to have a, a structured system right out the gate. And I had to kind of backtrack on this. You know, I started and I was just winging it. And I was just like, here, fill out this form. Here's another email. Now make your payment. Like it was all over the place. And it wasn't a, a seamless process that felt like I was rolling out the red carpet for my clients because they need to have a, a custom experience to um, be in line with the, with the prices that we're gonna be charging. And we'll talk about that here in a little bit, but um, really having a system and going through and saying, okay, if I were a client and I was trying to apply for this coaching, what does that process look like? How seamless is it? How easy is it for me to sign up? So when we're talking about onboarding, this is your first impression, okay? This is your client's first impression of you and your business. So we want it to be absolutely perfect and seamless. Your, your branding should be on point. Everything should flow together. They should know exactly what to expect next, okay? So the exercise I have my clients do is act as if you are a client or you can have like a trusted friend or a spouse navigate your application process, look for inefficiencies, look for things that are like, oh, I'm not really sure what to do next, or I was kind of wondering about this, and have somebody walk through that process for you. That way, you know, you're not sitting at it from your computer going, oh, well, I know what to do next. Yeah, duh, you know what to do next. It was your business. You created it, right? But if it's somebody who has no idea, and they're sitting here wondering, well, I filled out my application. I wonder when I'm going to hear from her. That's a different story, right? So, what you'll need, you'll need an application. You can do this through Linktree. You can do this on Google Forms. You can do it in Typeform. All those platforms are free, guys. Everything I am, I'm going to talk about on here is free to a certain extent, okay? Uh, next, you'll need some type of sales call platform, whether that be Zoom or FaceTime or Microsoft Teams or uh, you know, needing Calendly to set up your calendars and shoot automatic reminders. Um, you'll need a next steps email, so something that gets sent to them that says, hey, here's what to expect next. Uh, you will need contracts and liability waivers, obviously. Um, there is tons of verbiage out there already. Don't feel like you have to reinvent the wheel. Don't feel like you have to draft up a document from scratch. And I feel like a lot of people, and even I myself, got caught up in red tape in the beginning, right? Because we're also worried about getting sued or doing something wrong. Or for me, it was like, I don't want to get in trouble with the government. How am I going to pay my taxes? Like all of that. 
it's not as hard as it seems. And if you put in a good faith effort to actually do the right thing, typically you're not going to get in trouble. Okay. So I want to put your mind a little bit at ease there, but we're not really going to go into the legal side of things today just because it takes up way too much time. Um, but I can give you some more insight on that a little bit later. Um, you'll need a processing system, payment processing system, not Venmo, not PayPal. Okay. Venmo is not a business payment processing system, maybe for the nail salon down the street, but not for a custom coaching business client, right? Uh, and note on Venmo and PayPal, you can't have recurring payments. The clients have control over those payments every step of the way. And that's not what we want as a business, okay? You are trying to make money, right? You're offering a service. Yes, we want to help people, but you still have to make money in order to keep helping people, okay? Um, you'll need a platform for your programming and or nutrition protocols, uh, something in Google Drive. I use spreadsheets. I'm super old school. I like to have complete control over all of my programming uh, elements, um, and I like to keep those elements all in one place. So I use Google Drive and spreadsheets. Some people love ProCoach or FitCoach or all these other apps out there that can you know, have everything in one place, and those are great too. You just have to uh, figure out what's right for you and your business model. Um, and then you'll need, again, a re recurring payment system. Okay. So something that the client does not have control over that is going to withdraw those payments each and every month. Um, last but not least, I don't know if you can see this down here, but it says check-in process. So they need a clearly identified check-in process, whether that is you fill out a Google form, this is due by 9 a.m. every single Monday, and then this is what happens. So they need to know that entire process. They need to know how they're going to converse with you throughout the week. They need to know what to expect. And this should all be outlined in the very, very beginning of starting to work with you, right? So we've got to have an exact system for they apply, I set up the sales call, then we do the onboarding email, then I send them their programming, then this is what happens. Every single step of the way needs to be outlined. And I want you to automate as much as possible, okay? And I'm going to give you some tools for that here in just a little bit. So some simple things that you can do to outsource even more design, there is a bunch of, uh, there's a, a lot of, not trade work, what do they call that? Like contract workers out there now, like on Fiverr or, you know, some other platform where you can just hire somebody for like a day and say, hey, create all of my templates for me or help me with a, help me with a branding design for my business. And you can hire somebody to do just that. So if you are terrible at design, then don't do it outsource it, get somebody else to do it for you. It's not going to cost an arm and a leg because you're just hiring that person for one day. Okay. Uh, payments and accounting. Obviously, again, we need to set up that recurring payment system. Um, back here on this slide, I did note a couple of recurring payment systems that don't charge an arm and a leg. Um, Charge me, I think is like free up to $2,000. HoneyBook, same thing. I think it's like eight bucks a month. Um, obviously you're going to pay transaction fees, but you're not actually paying for the platform. And a lot of these um, have free trials as well. So you can get in there, see if it's even going to work for your business and your business model, and it costs you nothing at all. Um, social media posting, obviously you can schedule that out or get somebody to post it for you. It takes a lot of time, right? Content is a huge part of being an online trainer and making sure that you're getting your presence out there and that people know that you are the go-to authority for whatever it is that you're trying to coach, right? And then automation. So a couple of tools that I use for that. Zapier, guys, is free. And you can have what they call zaps. There are three of them that you can have for absolutely free. And zaps are things that hook one application to another, okay? So what I've done with my actual fitness clients is I have a type form and that type form is linked to a Google email, okay? So they fill out my type form. They automatically get an email that says, thank you so much for filling out my application. I'll be back with you in 48 hours with uh, you know, a call calendar or something like that. Or it hooks up my call calendar to that actual type form and they can book a sales call right from there. So that is something that is automatic that I don't have to do. I don't have to follow up. I don't have to do anything. They automatically receive that. And that is absolutely free, okay? There are so many free resources out there, guys, that you need to be utilizing to make yourself more efficient. So make sure you're looking for those things. I wish I had known about Zapier like three years ago when I'm trying to figure out, okay, what does the process of onboarding look like? Um, MailChimp, obviously, um, you can you don't even need to have a website now because MailChimp has landing pages for you. So if you're trying to sell your online coaching, you can create a landing page that says, 
here's everything you need to know about my online coaching. Here's what you get. Click here to apply. And you don't even have to have an, a complete website. You can put all your branding on there. It can all be in one place. And MailChimp will do all of that for you. It'll even automatically add an email address to your email list. And now you've got all that information of people that have perused your website or your landing page, right? And that all happens within one place. And uh, MailChimp, I think, is like 10 bucks a month to create landing pages. So not expensive whatsoever. Um, Calendly is huge as you're moving forward, you know, especially for things like um, client check-ins, uh, sales calls, consults. Um, it will send people automatic reminders for those sales calls and it will automatically hook your Zoom link to those reminders. So super, super time saving. And again, they do have free versions of that that have a minimum like, hey, you can have one call calendar with the free version. It'll still send your automatic reminders for you, but that will be absolutely free. Last thing to outsource is asking for help. When to hire a VA, when you're looking for landing pages or more specific design help, things like this presentation. My VA did most of it for me. I just went through and edited it. Um, noting inefficiencies and giving solutions. VAs are really good at looking for things that you could be doing better or things that you can completely take your hands off of. So that's an amazing feeling. Um, schedule management, they can help with that as well. Posting your social media, even content creation. Some of them are really versed in copywriting. And so they can do some of that for you. And then also looking at different platforms. I have my VA right now researching um, a different recurring payment system that might work better for my business. And I don't have to do that at all. So I can stick to stuff that I am actually good at. I can talk to my clients. I can create my content and that's all I have to do. So I'm hiring people on the back end to make those things more efficient for me. Um, and lastly, hire a mentor. Obviously, if you're feeling stuck, if you don't even know how to move forward, if you want insight who has from somebody who has been where you want to go, then you need to hire a business coach, right? And you have got to put skin in the game in order to be held accountable for your goals. And lastly, we need to stop playing small, guys. And I'm saying this with love because I played small in the beginning and I don't want you to make the same mistakes. So let's talk about some of those mistakes. It all starts with you. There is no blueprint for building an online business. Okay. I was Googling stuff for literally months. Like, how do I build an LLC? How do I pay my taxes? How do I create a sales funnel? How do I create a landing page? Googling all this. Do you know the amount of time that took me? Like an immense amount of time, guys, that I wasted on all of that when I could have just asked for help and hired somebody to do that for me. And it seems like, oh, I don't have the money to do that. It's not going to be beneficial. Like, I, I don't see the value in that right now, but you will, guys. You absolutely will. And the time you save outsourcing these things are, is, is the time that you can spend in trying to find your ideal clients and spending more time in the DMs, talking to people, getting to know people, creating relationships. And you can show up as more of yourself when you're not wasting your time and having all of your energy sucked out on things that you don't even enjoy doing, okay? I hired my first business coach and I doubled my income, guys. I doubled my income in four months, four months, because number one, I put skin in the game. And let me tell you, it was not cheap. I wanted to vomit when I first hired her, literally vomit. Like I could not believe I was like hitting enter. I was like, okay, here we go. But what that did was it required me to up my game. It required me to go all in on myself. I said, I'm going to make this investment and I better damn sure make sure I make it worth it, right? And so I automatically upped my game. I started showing up more. I started putting in the work. I held myself more accountable because I put skin in the game. And we're going to do that with your clients too. Um, so charging more in regards to that, the play small, thing small mentality, like we're playing big guys. So I started charging more. And because of that, I didn't have clients ghosting me anymore. People started checking in. They got better results. There was no resentment on my part because I wasn't giving free coaching. I wasn't uh, in it more than my clients were in it. Um, I stopped, yeah, I stopped not charging people, you know, friends and family. They still need to pay you. Guys, do not give your friends and family a free training. They need to pay you because they need to put skin in the game as well. They need to invest in themselves because it's just like anything else, like, uh, when you were a kid and your parents gifted you a car, you probably treated that car like crap. When you grew up and you bought your own car, now you take care of that thing like it's your baby, right? You have got to invest and you have got to get your clients to invest as well. And when they have to pay more, 
they're going to level up their game. Do you see like the, the parallels here, right? Same thing for business to fitness, okay? The more skin you put in the game, the more likely you are to see the plan through, okay? Also coaching, especially if we're talking about customized programming and nutrition coaching, this is a luxury item, right? You should not be charging 50, 100, $150 for this, okay? That's a pair of leggings, right? That's a month at the Y. That's cycling classes for three weeks, right? This is custom coaching. This is a plan tailored directly to them and their needs and goals. Time constraints, uh, preferences, all of that. You're going to spend a massive amount of time on these people. You're going to be available to them basically 24 seven. They're gonna have you in their pocket. What other profession do you know of out there when you can have an expert in your pocket and not pay thousands and thousands of dollars for that? There isn't one, okay? So make sure your pricing is in line with the service that you're going to provide. And also when you charge more, you're saying, I'm worth that. And in turn, you're going to expect a higher level of service from yourself as well. So it all works together, guys. Um, I started reaching more people when I went all in on my online business because I wasn't just focused on people in my hometown. I'm in Wichita, Kansas. It's a relatively big town. There's still a lot of people I haven't met, a lot of people I don't know, a lot of people I'm sure that I could help. But with the, with the advent of social media and Instagram, now I can reach people everywhere and anywhere. And we need to get out of that box of thinking, oh, I just need more referrals or, oh, I just need, you know, I need so-and-so to, you know, get me in the door at this place. And then I can talk about corporate wellness. Guys, you can reach literally anybody now. Okay. So stop putting yourself in this little box and thinking I need to keep myself right here within a 50 mile radius. We can talk to everybody now, which is absolutely awesome. So you can reach anybody who is your ideal client anywhere in the world. Um, I changed my mindset to one of abundance and gratitude, okay? Some of you might be thinking, man, the market is really saturated. There's a bunch of fitness coaches out there. How am I going to do this? How am I going to stand out? And guys, yeah, the market is saturated, but it's not competitive because you're going to be speaking to your ideal client. Uh, for example, I have five business clients right now in my mentorship, and all five of them are so, so different. One of them has a huge focus on mental health. That's her background. One of them is an auto mechanic. She works with, she wants to work with women in the trades and getting them more healthy. Uh, one of them is a former athlete. And so she's hyper, hyper focused on getting people back to healthy after they don't have, you know, that drive of com competition anymore, right? So all three of them have very, very different focuses. They have very different people they're trying to reach. And you all have your own individual people that you're trying to reach. You have your individual message. You have a unique something that you want to share with the world, but you have to learn how to share it, share it authentically, share it with passion and share it with energy. So let's talk a little bit about investing versus spending. Okay. I, I pulled this directly from uh, Google. What is investing? Investing is expending money with the expectation of achieving a profit or material result by putting it into financial plans, shares or property by using it to develop a commercial venture. Okay. Spending, and this is seriously a direct quote, to use up or pay out, exhaust, wear out, to consume wastefully or squander the waters to cause or squander, right? So when we're talking about investing versus spending, a lot of times uh, when I first started my business, I was like, oh my gosh, I got to pay $30 for a tripod so that I can shoot some content. And that was a big deal to me at that time, a big deal, right? And then it was, okay, now I need to have this payment processing system. That's another $129 a month. Oh my gosh, I don't think I can do this. But guys, you have got to get yourself out of the play small, stay small mentality, okay? Things like improving systems and processing, things like a business mentor, things like uh, something that's going to make your systems and processes move more efficiently. Those are all things that are gonna save you time and money down the road, right? Because I'm not running after people uh, tracking down payments. I'm not having to send multiple emails to try and get somebody booked. I am, I am staying in my space. I am able to focus on the things I need to focus on and show up more abundantly because I don't have to worry about any of that little stuff anymore. And I've got a business coach in my pocket who is going to keep me in line. She has given me so much perspective and so much insight, and she has been where I want to go. And because of that, I now see the investment that I made I, I'm seeing triple that back, right? So there's a big difference between investing and spending. And it's not just about money either. It's about time. 
and energy. And if you are anything like I was when I was first starting out, I, I had an energy gap, right? There was this big gap where I'm like, I have expended so much energy serving others and helping people. I don't know if I can do it anymore. But now that I have made my online business more efficient, I'm able to show up better for myself and for my family and for my clients. And so that energy is something that I'm investing in the online side of things because it's paying me dividends on the other side as far as my personal relationships go and the time freedom I have to show up better for my clients. Um, look at your calendar and your pocketbook and there you will find your priorities. Guys, we spend so much money on caffeine, eating out, the newest iPhone, the newest gadgets, athleisure, whatever your, we all have something, we all have that thing, right? That we like to kind of indulge in, you know, we get our nails done, we get our hair done, we do all of these things. But when we talk about a business coach, that's a thousand dollars a month. We're like, oh no, like there's no way I can do that. Do you realize how ludicrous that sounds? A business coach is helping you build something sustainable, okay? They're helping you invest in yourself and your business and your future. That is completely worth it. So I am saving you from the headache and overwhelm of starting an online business. Let me explain the top five mistakes I see most new online coaches making. They don't ask for help, obviously, first and foremost. Hire a coach, outsource, utilize the free resources that are out there for you, Zapier, Calendly, MailChimp, all these things. Uh, you wait for the perfect time to start. You think you need five bazillion certifications in order to be relevant, and that's absolutely not true. I have five certifications. I have an ACSM certification. I'm a USAPL club coach and referee. I have a functional nutrition and special uh, functional nutrition and metabolism certification and a couple others that I can't even remember, precision nutrition. But um, all of that is like 2% of what you need to know, guys. Seriously. You have got to get your hands in the trenches and get dirty. You have to start working with people or you're never going to learn. I've been doing this for nine years and I'm still learning every single day from my clients. And that's that's what you have to embrace is the fact that this is not going to be a, oh, now I know, there, I know everything there is to know about coaching. It's never going to happen, okay? You are always going to be learning and you should always want to be learning so that you can be better for yourself and for your clients. Um, waiting until you have a perfect plan or perfect systems you're always going to be finding ways to perfect your systems, okay? Have I given you an outline for things that you need right out the gate and hopefully that can set you up for success? Absolutely. But you're going to find inefficiencies that need more time to develop, okay? And you're not going to know that until you start and get in it and somebody says, hey, your Zoom link didn't work. And that's just the way it is, okay? You're never going to have more time in the day either, guys. When things slow down is the adult equivalent of the dog ate my homework, okay? Never going to happen. Things aren't going to slow down. You just need to jump in and do it. Um, focusing on the wrong things. This is a big one. And I did this a lot when I first started. Um, I wanted to have the perfect logo. I wanted my website to be amazing. I wanted to find the perfect name. And guys, to be honest with you, I changed everything about my brand about four months in. I thought I was in love with my logo, in love with my name, and I changed it all because it just didn't feel like me. Okay. So don't waste your time on all that when you first start. You don't even need anything to get started. You need a way for somebody to apply. You need a way to receive payment and you need a contract for them to sign. That's literally all you need to get started. You don't even need all the rest of that crap, okay? Get started, start getting clients, start getting your hands dirty, start gaining experience. Um, poor time management is a big one. Uh, I've been told, you know, if you can stay off your phone for 30 minutes and stay focused on work, you have a competitive advantage over everybody else because we, our attention is so divided these days that nobody can just stay focused and sit down and do something, okay? So if you can learn to manage your time appropriately, block your calendar, plan out your content, all of these things, you are going to be hands and feet above everybody else. Uh, you don't spend any time investing in personal and professional development. Again, always learning. This is something that you're always going to have to be doing, reading books, getting new certifications. That's something that should be on your priority list, right? We're not being complacent. We're continuing to better ourselves so that we can better our clients. Um, your actions don't align with your goals or dreams. Again, trying to get clients that aren't your ideal client or trying to make money for the sake of making money. Like that's never, <laughs> never going to end well for you. 
Um, and lastly, unrealistic expectations. Um, people thinking, oh, all, all I need to do is post and people are just going to come running or all I need to do is announce that I'm personal training. And all these people that said, oh, you should be a personal trainer are just going to come knocking down my door. Guys, it doesn't happen that way. Okay, You're going to have to work. You're going to have to go after your ideal client. You're going to have to talk to people. You're going to have to be social on social media, heaven forbid. Get in people's DMs. Comment on people's posts. Talk to people. Know what they need. And then you can tell them how you can provide that need. Okay, um, Thinking you'll make money quick. Guys, I know I said, hey, I scaled to six figures in eight months, but this has been a nine year process. OK, I've made a lot of mistakes, a lot of mistakes. So I'm not going to sugarcoat it for you. All right. There are things that are just going to take a while. And building authority online is one of those things. You have to be consistent for a really, 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 really long time. OK, but don't give up just because it's going to take a long time. Right. Again, that parallel between fitness and business. We tell our clients. Don't give up just because it's going to take a long time or it's going to take you even longer. Okay. You're building your dream. Be patient. Um, thinking all you need is certification to know all you need to know. Obviously, we just talked about that. No certification is going to tell you everything you need to know. You need to work with people. You need to get experience. You need to get your hands dirty. It took me five years to make $75,000 working for somebody else. It took me eight months to hit 20K months on my own. I went all in on me and it was the best decision I ever made. There are times when I question my sanity. <laughs> there are times that I'm like, man, it'd be really nice to go back to that eight to five, but I will never, ever do it. Guys, I'm feeling so fulfilled now. I have so much more time, so much more financial freedom. I can show up better for my clients. I have the energy to put towards things that I am passionate about. And that's what life is all about, right? Don't feel like you need to stay stuck. You don't need to stay stuck. I've made all the mistakes. Now I want to help you guys avoid burnout and help more people because guys, the world needs good coaches. There are so many crappy coaches out there, guys. And I know you've heard the horror stories. Like it's awful. It gets bad out there. And there's still so much misinformation that people still don't know who to trust or where to go. And I want to create coaches that actually want to help people and know exactly what they need to do to help those people. Um, your systems and strategies need to become laser focused. You need to be focused on your ideal client and who you can help speak with authority, show up daily and get your pricing in line with the product that you're going to be offering. So my business clients are seeing results like improving their systems and processes like we just talked about. They all have a system now for how they're onboarding clients. They are assigning their first clients and they align with their values. I just got a message from one of them the other day that said, how awesome is it that I now have clients that are bought into the process? They're showing up, they're checking in. They love this stuff. And guys, that's exactly what we're looking for, right? My clients are feeling confident on camera. They are posting content that they know and are in line with their goals, right? So they can avoid that imposter syndrome and they don't feel like they shouldn't be here, right? I always want people to feel like they should be here, like you should belong, like you know your stuff and you can be confident in who you are and the product that you offer. So if you choose to do VIP coaching, what you get with that, eight master classes. Those are focused on pillars of your business. We talk about things like contracts, liability, uh, accounting, uh, how to hire a VA. Um, we talk about uh, the Sunday we're going to go over nutrition and programming basics. Like I want my coaches to be better coaches. I don't just want them to make money. I want them to actually help people, right? Uh, they get monthly private coaching calls so I can just focus on their business alone, not anybody else. So we dive in, what are your issues right now? How can we solve them? And how can we get you on the road to uh, quitting your nine to five or making more money or getting you that financial freedom that you've been looking for? Content auditing, this is a big one. I just audited a presentation for one of my clients who is doing a corporate wellness presentation. So you get my eyes on all of your products, all of your nutrition and workout plans, all of your content, 10 years experience right here with my eyes on you, helping you through that process. I'm also a fairly good writer. So there's that as well. Um, and you also get group messaging. I love our group message with all my VIP clients because they give each other support. They're each other's biggest cheerleaders. They uh, talk about things that are holding them back or things that they don't feel so confident about. And it's really just a space to connect with like-minded people that can help you along your journey. So my coaching is perfect for you if you're ready to fill your roster, if you want to quit your job, if you are looking to make a little bit of extra money, if you need to stop working in the gym so much, that was me, I was working 12 to 16 hour days at the gym, 
if you want to make more money creating impact, doing what you love, guys, this is what it's all about and helping more people. Um, creating more money and more time freedom. That scheduling aspect is so huge. I don't have to ask anybody for vacation anymore. And that is an amazing feeling. Um, and if you want me as your mentor for four months, obviously you just got a little taste of what my coaching is like. This is me. This is who I am. I'm no fluffs, no frills. I'm pretty uh, straight shooter. So if that resonates well with you, I'm the girl for you. Um, I've got a super special offer just for you guys that are attending the master class. You get 20% off my private business coaching for the first four months. Um, only two people though, okay? I believe in you. I want you to believe in you and take that leap and invest in yourself. This offer does expire in the next 48 hours. So take a screenshot of this or drop your IG handle below in the chat and I will shoot you this link personally. That way you can apply that way. But this is my application. We'll set up a sales call. I will speak directly to you, figure out what your issues are and figure out if we're a good fit. Now we got a little bit of time for Q&A. So I'm going to stop my screen share here. Perfect. Anybody have any questions? I don't see any chat. I should have told you guys to drop it in the chat as I was walking through this, but I totally forgot. I get excited. So <laughs> do you have any questions right out the gate? What's a VA? A virtual assistant. Yeah, virtual assistant. People who just help you with your business back end stuff and you guys don't even have to ever see each other face to face. It's awesome. She's my right hand. She does all the crap that I don't want to do and it's totally free. Anybody else? Jackie, Chase, what do you think? No, maybe. Chase, do you have any questions? No. Good. Do you have pretty any good. questions? I feel like a pretty, pretty well informed presentation. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, that was really good. Glad to hear it. Glad to hear um, it. I do have a question and no um, Chase might probably elbow me for asking this, but like, does a coach need to be in like super great physical, like athletic um, shape per se? Like you are like a freaking rock star model you've got your abs chase has abs but they're just hidden under you know some layers so i'm just asking because like is that something that like there's plenty, somebody there's should consider of, there's, there's plenty of i mean i'm just keeping it straight here like you are place, you're real so. and i love that that's amazing um so <laughs> the long answer short answer no, absolutely not. And I think part of that is knowing who your ideal client is. Obviously, Chase probably isn't going to go after somebody who wants a shredded six pack, right? He's working on powerlifters no. <laughs> who are performance driven, right? So that's what we're talking yeah. about. That's why he would have authority in that space because he's been doing it for 20 years. Like that's, that's something that he can mm -hmm. do, something that he is actually embodying, right? So no, I, I think you need to know who your ideal client is and make sure that your actions are in line with that. Cause I'm all about practicing what I preach. Right. But that doesn't mean that I have to be a supermodel or super shredded to be a personal trainer or to help how to, how to get there either. Like, um, some coaches are like, Hey, I coach cause I can't do like, I'm a super great coach. Like who do you think Tiger Woods coach was right? We don't know. I have no idea. I don't even know the guy's name cause he wasn't a great golfer, but he's a great coach. Right. Mm -hmm. so, I mean, you can go at it from a lot of different ways, but I know a lot of trainers that aren't, you know, JP, JP's not shredded <laughs> <laughs> and he's super successful, right? Super I mean, successful. He's, yeah. He's working, so he's, true. He's working on his nutrition. He is, but he knows his stuff and powerlifting. So yeah, no, no that's a really good shredded. point. Yeah. Just I'm just thinking like, just because like, I know that Chase could do really well with the coaching part and all the other business aspects that you were talking about. I'm fairly well versed in that because I'm, I'm a direct seller. So I've taken Perfect. many business courses and things. So like everything that you said, I'm like, she knows her shit. She is absolutely, everything is resonating with me. Awesome. And I'm going like, oh, well I could do that. But like, obviously I'm not seasoned enough to do coaching for anybody but Chase would kick some butt at doing that, you know, with him, like you said, I think with his ideal client. So 
You guys are a dynamic duo. That's awesome. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That'll be awesome. Perfect. Trey, did you get on? Yes, I'm here. Trey, what's up, dude? I was le- trying to let you in for like five minutes and I don't know what's <laughs> happening, but bummer. Okay. We're glad you got uh, in. Perfect. So it was on my end. My computer had to be reset a few times. So oh, gotcha. I apologize about that. But uh, no yeah, problem. I was just typing a I was just typing a question because I was not sure if I was actually on the microphone or not. Yeah, go for it. But um so yeah, obviously reoccurring payments builds business and it builds the future. But uh do you believe in selling any paid in full packages for short term goals for certain clients? I do. Um I, I think you have to meet people where they're at. And typically, like you said, business-wise, MRR or monthly recurring revenue is where it's at. But um, I have sold some uh, upfront packages, um, especially for things like group training or um, you know, my, my longer-term clients who know they want to you know, continue this and they need a little bit of a, maybe a discount or something, some type of incentive. I typically do paid in full stuff as like an incentivized thing. And so um, it's not offered for everybody and for every single service, but um, it is kind of a way to, um, like you said, if I have a if I have a, a an immediate goal, like I need to fund this project or, or I'm looking to um, you know make this amount this month, that's when I'll look at pushing something more towards a paid in full package. Um, but I think, but for long term sustainability, just like you were talking about, the MRR is really where it's at, and I think a lot of people lose sight of that. Um, especially when you're your own boss and you're like, I just, you know, wow, I just made $20,000 in one month. And now I can just sit back and do nothing when really we need to be focused on, well, how much money are you going to bring in the next month and how are you right. the bills? So, um, I think it's highly individual and it probably has to do more with what kind of services you're selling as well. Gotcha. Thank you. Anybody else? Good questions. Love it. Lisa, what are you thinking? Are you like jazz now? Or are you like? I'm still, I'm doing my engineer thing. Yeah. No, and, no, I know. But like, if you were to make the switch, like, would that feel overwhelming to you right now? Right now, yeah. Yeah, for sure. You're crushing it, so. Yeah. For sure, for sure. All right. Well, there's not any more questions, guys. You can always hit me up on Instagram. Let me know. Um, but if you want to book a call and talk about what mentorship involves or how business coaching works, I'm happy to talk with any of you about that. But thank you so much for coming tonight. I appreciate y'all. And dang, I kept this right at an hour. Boom. Love you guys. Okay. Thanks, Kate. Thank you. Thank you, Kate. Appreciate it. Anytime. Bye, guys. Bye.